Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. This video um, hopefully won't be too long, and it will be different in the sense that I'm just going to talk about um, this particular um, series, author, genre, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll begin by welcoming you here. Whether you're a new subscriber or if you've been with me for uh, since the beginning, I very much appreciate your presence here. And um, truly, I've said it before, it, uh, it gives me a reason to carry on. Now, uh, <coughs> sorry, I hope it's not going to be one of those coffee, coffee days. No doubt... Um, many of the people who view this channel also love books, uh, books to read, books to collect, books to um, <laughs> destroy. And one of the books that I'm sure you encounter over and over again are the series of books by Sark. Now, I didn't take the time to, uh, you know, there's her mugshot, I guess. Um, to research her and, and uh, remember exactly what her backstory is. But I do know that uh, when I, years and years ago, when I saw a book like this, and I don't know if this is the first one I bought, I'll show you all the ones I have, um, I was attracted to it for a variety of reasons. The color, <coughs> the, um, the font, the fact that it is easy to read in bite-sized chunks. Um, the fact that it was so different from anything else out there. Now, I don't know how they're characterizing. Um, let's see if we can figure this out. You know, where, where books like this would be shelved now. Whether it would be in the creativity section of a bookstore. I mean, uh, a retail bookstore. Uh, or self-help or whatever for years and years and years uh, <laughs> I made a beeline to self-help because I and this is snobbery and I'll admit that I believe for a, a large part of my life that um, reading fiction was a waste of my precious time that if I wasn't learning something or improving myself then I was just you know <laughs> again wasting time now, luckily, I got over that, <laughs> and I realized that books are books are books. They, you know, I mean, with some exceptions, of course, they all have value, and they all give us what we need to to receive. So for a while there, I was on a, on a kick reading a lot of uh, thrillers, mystery, stuff like that. You know, those are the kinds of things that I gravitate to, say, on Netflix. Anyway, we're here to talk about Sark. Now, I had one of my uh, most faithful, most interactive uh, subscribers, hi, Teresa, uh, reach out to me through Instagram, wondering if I had heard of the Sark books and how she'd picked one up at a used bookstore. And frankly, that's where I would suggest if you feel um, inclined to look into these books uh, obviously you'd like to get them at a at a used book price which incidentally is seems to be creeping up and up and up so um i of course replied to her and said yes i have a number of these and yes i can see why you would have been attracted to it for the very same reasons that i was you know the sort of the um the way it's illustrated uh, the color, like if you needed empowerment, empowering types of words or quotations. William Stafford, I have woven a parachute out of everything broken. Would this not be great collage fodder? Now, I, again, I'll say, well, I guess for the third time, I didn't research her backstory. But I would bet dollars to donuts that she is like all of us, that she had something in her or in her life that needed healing, needed uh, 
growth, needed nurturing, because we're all in that, on that, we're all in a process of evolution. And I've talked before about uh, Maslow's hierarchy of, um, of self of needs and self-actualization. So pretty hard to worry about becoming a fully developed self-actualized person if you don't have enough food to get through the month or the, the week. Um, if you don't have shelter, if you don't have certain basic needs. So it, it begins, it's like a pyramid. Basic human survival needs at the bottom all the way up to, you know, <laughs> enlightenment for lack of a better word. So um, I'm just wanting to bring these books to your attention for, uh, for, for the reasons I've stated. I will show you a few more. At one point, I thought, you know, I'm going to look through these books again. And I, because I'm, well, who knows why, I started putting them in um, order of publication date. And then, you know, would look through some at bedtime. And anyway, got all mixed up. And it doesn't matter. Right here, look at those words. Um, basically, I think that regardless of where you are, in your, where we are in our own personal journey, there is something to be gotten out of books like this. Um, oh, there's a creativity part here. So she's promoting, um, you know, healthier thinking, creativity, I guess, honesty, you know, all those things that, that we should all be striving for. Uh, we heal from the inside in certain outside locations. And then she lists some of her favorite ones, ocean, woods, rocks, waterfalls, gardens, tops of hills. So we can very easily put ourselves in that frame of mind and think, okay, where is our healing place? Like I'd have to buy a plane ticket and travel for a few hours to get to an ocean. Uh, you know, whereas someone like Carol from Crinkled Path lives near an ocean. So the ocean probably has different significance for her than it does for me. But, um, you know, and same thing with, you know, say, uh, mountains. So we all have those places. We just have to maybe become aware of them again. So hopefully I'm, I'm leaving these on screen long enough for you to write down the titles if you're so inclined. So this one is Succulent Wild Woman, Dancing with Your Wonderful Self. Wonderful Self. Uh, and this was 1997, and it's like a play on that Matisse uh, painting, of course. Transfer Transformation Soup by Sark. Healing for the Splendidly Imperfect. Well, uh, sign me up, baby. Um, this one... I should say that at one point, and maybe I've unsubscribed, uh, yeah, unsubscribed. Uh, I subscribed to get her, you know, whatever she was putting out in terms of a, um, why can I not see a date anyway? What she was, uh, she was putting out a, I don't know if a weekly or monthly or whatever newsletter. And, um, so I thought, well, I, I don't, you know, why can't I, I? What am I, chopped liver? Can't I get an inspirational message in my inbox every week or whatever? And then, of course, you, you know, you slap yourself in the forehead and you think, how many waking hours a day does a person need to read all the and admittedly good stuff that comes into our inboxes? So I think I unsubscribe or I haven't read one for <laughs> year. Uh, this one, and too bad I can't find the date, has a lot more color. So, you know, I think as these books go along, um, oh, obviously bought that second hand. Somebody had an appointment at uh, Grey Nuns Hospital. Um, 
you know, she probably came out of her shell a bit more, <laughs> although <laughs> it's hard to believe she was holding anything back. So this one, Transformation Soup, Healing for the Splendidly Imperfect. Cannot see a date. I love the word bodacious. I was involved with a woman at one point in a, we were planning this undertaking uh, and we were going to bring the best of our qualities um, together and our working, the working name for our, for ourselves was Bodacious Broads. <laughs> I love it. The Bodacious Book of Succulents, Daring to Live Your Succulent Wild Life. And there she is again. Okay, so categories are self-help, motivational, creativity. Uh, self-help, healing, inspiration. Inspiration, self-help, sexuality. Okay. Let's see what this one offers. <laughs> More color, bigger printing. Now, I don't know what, uh, why there seem to be other people's stories in here, but I guess that is one way of, um, look at how nice that is. That looks like a, contour drawing to be honest with the, you know and um i think i've talked about that in the past a contour drawing is when you are basically drawing something that is before you without looking at your paper you put your pen or pencil down on a paper and you just almost get into a zone a meditative state and follow the contour <laughs> of the items and just look up like, okay, if say if she had started with the chair, maybe she started here and blah, 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 blah. When you reach a point where, oh, you've got to, then you're allowed to peek and reposition your pencil to a new starting point. Keep surprise close at hand. I often criticize myself for the man I love. The other night as I was listing his faults in my mind, I suddenly called him to meet me on the back stairs halfway down. He sounded quite touched by my suggestion. I didn't even know why, but I somehow knew that if we stood in the summer wind and moon together, something could shift, and it did. So uh, learn to fight your inner critics as fiercely as you would an attacker. The inner critics started for a good purpose when we were small and grew out of proportion to what we need now. Learning to stop inner critic attacks is essential for love to grow. Be willing to live in between right and wrong. The ego needs and desperately wants to be right and make others wrong. In between right and wrong is a soft, messy, laughing place where it doesn't matter. I'm still spending an inordinate amount of time trying to be right. There is much to learn. Now, is there a person alive who hearing these words doesn't feel a, a sense of recognition? Anger. Some people are very angry and need, you know, maybe help working with that. And you can see that it's almost structured a little bit like a workbook in places where a person is encouraged to, you know, get interactive. with the material. So maybe this gal was on to oh, 1998. Maybe, okay, bodacious, splendid, bold, remarkable means being paid for just being alive. Succulents is powerful, means we are each a gift exactly as we are in this moment with no improvements. Um, Good to start with a definition. Could this, you know, if, if you, again, I'll say it, if you squint, <laughs> could this not be like an early a first generation junk journal? Okay, 
let's keep going. This one was $18.95, and let's see how old it is. A Creative Companion, How to Free Your Creative Spirit. I thought this was one of the early ones. How to Be an Artist. Stay loose, learn to watch snails, plant impossible gardens, invite someone dangerous to tea. Make little signs that say yes and post them all over your house. Make friends with freedom and uncertainty. Look forward to dreams. Cry during movies. Swing as high as you... I've, I've been known to cry during the 6 o'clock news. Swing as high as you can on a swing set by moonlight. Cultivate moods. Refuse to be responsible. Do it for love. Take lots of naps. Give money away. Do it now. The money will follow. Believe in magic. Laugh a lot. Celebrate every gorgeous moment. Take moon baths. Have wild imaginings. Transformative dreams and perfect calm. Draw on the walls. Okay, maybe not that one. Read every day. Imagine yourself magic. Giggle with children. Listen to old people. Well, you're doing that here. <laughs> um, incidentally, I will be having a special birthday um, announcement to make at some point. My birthday is in early March. Open up. Dive in, be free, bless yourself, drive away fear, play with everything, entertain your inner child. You are innocent. Build a fort with blankets, get wet, hug trees, uh, write love letters. Okay, so she wrote that in 89. Yeah, this might have been the first book. Yeah, okay, copyright 1989. Um... Okay, choose a word or words that describe you or how, or how you'd like to be described or make up your own. <laughs> okay, so she says at the bottom here, I know angelic appears twice. We need more angels. So these are all qualities to aspire to. Oh, I guess she lives around San Francisco. Or I did in 89. How to really love a child. My favorite place to read books as a child, besides my bed, was in the rough safety of the apple tree branches in my backyard. I was always too much of a chicken to climb a tree, and maybe we didn't have the right kind of trees anyway. A garden of friends blooming. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Nothing but eyes. Okay, keep going. We've got a few more to go. This is a big one. And it's a... Uh, yeah, the only hardcover I have. Sark's Journal and Playbook. A place to dream while awake. Okay, this book is dedicated to you. And all the contents are inside of you. Uh, copyright 93. Your roots are firmly placed. The path is clear. Nobody has to stand alone. And we all lived and loved among the stars. I was, oh, see, you know, years since I flipped through these. What angels are in your life? Who gives you, uh, who gives your heart wings? Where do you feel most at home? Draw your creative companion. Anyway, I haven't looked at this for years. And really, when I was, I'm trying, because I keep buying books, I was looking for a way to make books. I mean, make room for books. Oh, hey, isn't that a cool way to do like a, a bibliography or a... Uh, a, a reading list, writing down the bones. Who hasn't read that one? Natalie Goldberg. Uh, the Zen of Seeing, I think I have that one. Writing for Your Life, I have that one. May Sarton. And of course, my, the love of my life, Julia Cameron. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was thinking, well, I could certainly get rid of some of these. I didn't, and that's a sewn, 
Yeah, sewn signature. I could take these pages out. Um, it's like an altered journal, practically. I mean, it could easily become uh, an art journal. So much white space. But now that I am revisiting this with you, and just randomly... Uh, <laughs> Write a love letter on a bed sheet with magic markers. Sleep under it. <laughs> okay. Some of those things are maybe a bit off the wall. A good nap can be hard to find. Sneak away and set yourself up for the perfect nap. A snack, your favorite pillow, and a certain kind of quiet. I don't let myself indulge in naps unless I really cannot keep my <laughs> eyes awake. Uh, I mean, my eyes awake, my eyes open. Uh, fill this tree with those names and how they support you. List some of your favorite books. Again, I will just say there is no shortage of these books in the bookstore, uh, in the thrift stores and used bookstores. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Maybe we'll paint marshmallows purple or free circus elements, elephants. Maybe we'll ride on a chocolate merry-go-round or make tennis shoes for camels. Um, and you'll notice, much like those um, journals that we all encounter in thrift stores, none of these have been, write, have been written in. Okay, prosperity pie. How to relax about money and everything else. More than 2 million Sark books in print. Okay, do we have a year here? You can see all these other books have been illustrated there. Okay, that has to be caught. 2002. Very little is needed to make a happy life, Marcus Aurelius. Be a lamp, <clears throat> be a lamp or a lifeboat or a ladder. Help someone's soul heal. Walk out of your house like a shepherd, said Rumi. I'm talking about self-love, not narcissism. We magnify money and make our whole lives about it. We are much more than our money. <laughs> Where are you hiding? And look, there she is, right in the little, under the shelter of that age. And you can see, <laughs> no one wrote in this book, including me. Ay, ay, ay. Discovery system for adventures. What adventures have you recently had? Who can you adventure with? Where will you go to adventure? How can we allow the unthinkable? How can we expand our definitions to include the actuality of it all? We're often so busy dividing it all up with good, bad, mad, sad, lost, found. What if we blur the sharp planes or sharp divides and smear it all together? It would be a marvelous tapestry, I'm sure. Pie professional. Thanks. Oh, and here are sort of acknowledgments of who has helped her and resource pages. Okay, two more. Mm, glad, no matter what. Transforming loss and change into gift and opportunity. Christian Northrop. Um, Christian Northrop. Um, a doctor. She's the author of Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. A wise woman herself. <clears throat> she's saying, in my humble opinion, this is the best book Sark has written yet. Uh, this obviously came from the library and was stamped 2010. Oh, so here she's moved up in the world. There are all these 
endorsements. Let's see if we re identify. Cheryl Richardson, of course. That was an Oprah guest, often. Don't know who he is. Don't know who he is. Uh, Alan Cohen. I think I have his stuff. Marielle Hemingway. Jennifer Loudon. I love her. She's the, she's the woman that wrote the book on a uh, women's retreat. Christiane. I don't know how to say her name. Northrop. Uh, Joan Borshenko, of course, she's been around forever. Anyway. Okay, so gifts of death spells God. So this is probably dealing with grief and loss. And, you know, none of us are getting out of here alive. And the older we get, the more likely it is that we have lost somebody close to us. <laughs> Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. So we want to embroider that on a cushion cover. Okay. Now what is this about? So maybe these are additional resources, or are they contributors, or what? Kind of, they seem to be profiles of someone. Transformational change sheet. Give yourself the gift of change. Fill out the sheet. Ask a friend or loved one to mentor you in your process of transformation. I choose to transform. I can't, won't, haven't yet because... I positively challenge myself to, I'm resisting my positive challenge because I'm willing to change, I'm glad about. Oh, I guess her real name is Susan, a.k.a. Sark. Okay, and the last one. Sorry, I don't know how, I'm, how long I'm going on. I didn't intend to read you excerpts. Make your creative dreams real. A plan for procrastinators, perfectionists, busy people, and people who would really rather sleep all day. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is Sark. Living proof that dreams can come true once you allow yourself to express them. So she's obviously still doing a lot of the... Uh, shall we say illustration or artwork in here? Uh, okay, what have we got? 2004. This book is dedicated to grace, to the grace and beauty of my godchildren and their creative dreams. Now, I defy you to look at a page like this. Oh, <laughs> this is a non-linear table of contents called Dream Dots. If you're, if you're delighted by order and detail, go to page 15 for a second table of contents. Hmm. Um, okay, this is abbreviated content, just enough to give you a taste. Full and complete, blah, blah, blah. At the end of each chapter are games, gifts, challenges, and resources. Um, oh, I, I, I derailed my own train of thought. Oh, see, this is more like real typesetting. Oh, that's a note that I wrote, something that I wrote. Okay. Oh, yeah, more like real typesetting. I bet you that didn't go over that well. Because that 2010 book is back, too. Quitting is not defeat. They didn't all look beautiful. They didn't look beautiful at all once I began them. From a distance, there was beauty. Close up, I saw the 
I saw all of my ugly doubts and limitations. I flailed. I say to you all, flail more. <laughs> so that's how I think we all feel in the studio sometimes, particularly if we're if we're stretching our boundaries and not just doing, you know, the same thing we did yesterday and the day before and two months ago and a year and a half ago. When we um, choose to push those boundaries, yeah, it, it there's ugliness for sure and self-doubt. Yeah, this is the least colorful of them all. Change is woven all through creative dreams. Looks like there are people maybe who had a bit of a, maybe she sort of interviewed people. We're all dreaming while awake. Uh, you know, I guess this sort of, you know, would be considered testimonials or something. Anyway, guys, I will stop there. I just wanted to, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't been aware of this woman up until now, or looked at these books and thought, oh, which kindergartner did that? Um, I think there is value there. And of course, we all love to save money. So if you can acquire a book or two, or one book, um, and, and, you know, taste it, see if you like it, then um, it'll probably enhance your, um, uh, your mood <laughs> and perhaps your creativity as well. Anyway, guys, um, if you like this sort of thing, I don't know that I have many other authors that I would want to do this with, but um, if I, you know, I, I could certainly do the, a similar video about Julia Cameron. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments if you like this or if you thought it was a waste of your time and mine. Uh, and be, you know, tell the truth. Because, hey, that's what we're all striving for, isn't it? Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.